This is a video instructional on how to perform a pap smear and pelvic exam. So before we do any examination, we have to first explain the purpose and conduct of the procedures to be done to our patient. Pelvic exams are invasive and require discussion with the patient prior to beginning. This should include the rationale for the exam, the steps involved so that they know what to expect, and obtaining their verbal consent prior to proceeding. Always use language or vocabulary that is appropriate and understandable. Instruct your patient to empty her bladder prior to examination, as a full bladder can make the exam very uncomfortable for the patient. Instruct the patient to remove her lower garments inside a secure examination area and lie down on the examination table with her feet placed on the stirrups or footrest. Make sure that you provide a blanket or a gown for adequate privacy. So the patient should be in a supine position like in this picture, or you can also elevate the head of the table to 30 degrees, and this usually makes the exam more comfortable for the patient. Make sure that all materials needed are prepared prior to the exam. The materials that you will need for this are the following. So you have the speculum, the glass slide, this is the fixative for the pap smear, two gloves for both of your hands, and the materials you will need for the collection of the cellular sample for the pap smear. Glove both hands, then proceed to inspect the external genital organs. Identify the following external structures such as the mons pubis, the clitoris, the labia majora, the labia minora, the introitus of the vagina, and the anal opening. So note any abnormalities in this area, such as any vaginal discharge, scars in the perineum, probably because of a previous delivery, evidence of HPV infection, typically genital or the perianal area, and this can be isolated or clusters of bumps, which often have cauliflower-like appearances, or any other ulcers, masses, skin or mucosal findings. Palpation of discrete structures can be done as indicated by the presence of observed abnormalities or symptoms. After inspection of the external genitalia, we get our speculum, then grasp it by the handle and lubricate the speculum using water. Then prepare to insert the speculum. To do this, we have to gently separate the labia majora and then insert the speculum in a diagonal manner and then once inside the vagina, swing the speculum into mid position until the cervix is reached and then open the speculum gently and adjust it until it cups and brings the cervix into full view and then lock the speculum. Alternatively, we can also use this technique by using the fingers of our non-dominant hand to expose the introitus. So in here, we use the two fingers of our non-dominant hand to apply a downward pressure on the vaginal floor and then gently place the speculum over those fingers and into the vagina. And then again, take note that we insert the speculum in a diagonal manner and then once inside the vagina, you swing the speculum into mid position until the cervix is reached. And then open the speculum gently and adjust it until it cups and brings the cervix into full view. Once the cervix is visualized, examine the cervix and the vaginal walls. And then report any visualized vaginal discharge. Note its color, consistency, adherence to walls, odor, or the presence of erythema. Next is we have to collect cellular sample for pap smear. And in this video instructional, we will teach you three techniques on how to collect your cellular sample. First is by using the cytobroom. Insert the central bristles of the cytobroom into the endocervical canal deep enough to allow the shorter bristles to fully contact the ectocervix. And then push gently and rotate the broom in a clockwise direction for 5 complete 360 degree turns. After collecting your sample, remember to smear your sample over a glass light. 
So just to give you a clear view of the cytobroom technique, we will now show you this technique using a clay sample. So we insert the central bristles of the cytobroom into the endocervical canal deep enough to allow the shorter bristles to fully contact the ectocervix and then rotate the broom in a clockwise direction for 5 complete 360 degree turns. The next technique is using the Ayer spatula with the cytobrush. So first we use the Ayer spatula for collecting sample from the ectocervix. So in using the Ayer spatula, make sure that you use the protruded end against the endocervix and then this contoured end or shorter end against the ectocervix. So just to demonstrate, okay, so you put the protruding end over the endocervix and then the contoured end over the ectocervix and then rotate 360 degrees over the entire ectocervix while maintaining tight contact with the ectocervical surface. Then smear your cellular sample over one area of the slide. So next we use the cytobrush. So the cytobrush is used to collect samples from the endocervical canal. So to demonstrate this, So we insert the brush into the endocervix until only the bottommost fibers are exposed and then slowly rotate one four to one half turn in one direction. And then don't forget to smear the cellular sample over one area of the glass light. So again, just to give you a clear view of the Ayer spatula with cytobrush technique, here is the technique again using the, a clay sample. So using the Ayer spatula, put the protruding end over the endocervical canal and then rotate the contoured end around the ectocervix. And then smear the cellular sample over one area of the glass slide. And then using the cytobrush, Insert the cytobrush into the endocervical canal and rotate gently. And then smear the cellular sample over one area of the same glass slide. The third technique is using three cotton pledgets, and these cotton pledgets are used to obtain specimens from the endocervix, from the ectocervix, and the lateral vaginal walls. So the first cotton pledget is to collect the sample from the endocervix and then smear over one area of the glass slide. The next is for the ectocervix, just wipe around the ectocervical area. And then smear in one area of the same glass slide and then lastly we have uh, the vaginal walls and then smear in one area of the same glass slide. So after collection of the cellular sample for pap smear, we now remove the speculum. So do this with care so as not to cause discomfort for your patient. So first we have to unlock the speculum. Then pull the speculum back a bit so that the cervix is no longer in between the blades of the speculum. And then once you've cleared the cervix, you turn the speculum diagonally, closing the speculum halfway while pulling it gently all the way to remove it from the vagina. Next, we have to apply a fixative over our specimen and, of course, label the slide. So after the pap smear is done, we now proceed with pelvic examination. So gently separate the labia mahora and then gently introduce the lubricated examining fingers into the introitus. Then place your non-dominant hand over the suprapubic area and examine the cervix, the corpus, and the left and right adnexal areas. In doing the internal examination, you have to place your fingers under or on the sides of the cervix and then gently move it and then note if this movement will cause any pain for the patient. You should also note the general consistency of the cervix. 
Then with your fingers beneath the cervix or in the posterior fornix, gently lift up and then at the same time, place your other hand on the lower abdomen immediately above the symphysis pubis. Imagine that you are pushing the uterus up from the vaginal hand to the abdominal hand. Then try to move the uterus between your two hands. Note the size, shape, consistency, and if manipulation causes any pain. Next is we have to palpate the left and right adnexa. So pull your hand back slightly and then move your fingers towards the right fornix and try to palpate the right adnexa. After palpating the right adnexa, withdraw your hand slightly and then move your fingers into the left fornix and then palpate the left adnexa. After the bind manual exam, we now proceed with the rectovaginal exam. So gently withdraw the middle finger and gently introduce this into the anal opening and conduct a rectovaginal exam. This exam is sometimes performed to examine the ovaries, adnexa, uterus, and to assess the pathology between the vagina and the rectum. We also assess the rectovaginal septum and the parametria using the rectovaginal examination. And then upon completion of the rectovaginal exam, gently withdraw the examining fingers and inform the patient that the examination has been concluded. At the end of the exam, provide the patient with privacy so that they can clean themselves up and get dressed. Once that's done, you can return to answer their questions, review your findings, and discuss the next steps with your patient. And of course, you have to thank the patient for her cooperation.